Hello all. Let us now look at Gothic art in England, 1180 to 1520. Our objectives as usual are acquire the basic vocabulary, concepts and criteria for understanding, interpreting and analyzing Gothic art. Encounter significant works of the period and enable them to study later works influenced by this period. Understand and appreciate the role of values, beliefs and ideas in shaping the art of the times. In this chapter, we focus on Gothic art in England and look at the following. After introducing the chapter, we will look at English Gothic styles, their characteristics and technical aspects and representative examples of art styles. Salisbury Cathedral, Westminster Hall, York Minister, Gloucester Cathedral. We will also look at the notable examples of each period. Immediately after the new choir, at St. Denis, the Gothic style spread beyond France. England was one of the first to adopt this style. Since after its defeat by the Normans in 1066, there had been commercial, cultural and political contacts between the two countries. Gothic architecture continued to flourish in England in 100 years after the percepts of Renaissance architecture were formalized in Florence in early 15th century. Like the Gothic art and architecture elsewhere, English Gothic is defined by its pointed arches, vaulted roofs, buttresses, long, large windows and spires. Many features of Gothic architecture had evolved naturally from Romanesque architecture often known in England as Norman architecture. This evolution can be seen most particularly at the Norman Durham Cathedral, which has the earliest pointed ribbed high vault known. Early English Gothic churches differed in several aspects from their French counterparts. They had thicker, heavier walls, that were not much changed from Romanesque proportions. Accentuated, repeated mouldings on the edges of interior arches. A sparing use of tall, slender, pointed lancet windows. Nave pyres consisting of a central column of light colored stone surrounded by a number of slimmer attached columns made of black per brick marble. English Gothic developed almost as early as French, but the English cathedral is quite different in conception. During the early English period, 1150 to 1250, although the Gothic pointed arch was adopted, the heavy walls of the Romanists tend to linger on. These were abundant in the so-called decorated period 1250 to 1350. When the small lancet windows of the early English style were replaced with broad, richly tracery openings, which in turn gave way in the perpendicular period 1350 to 1500 to windows latticed with vertical mullions and horizontal transoms. Also in the French cathedral, the exterior focuses at the west end. In England, it is at the center. The French cathedral rises from the middle of the town with houses and shops closed around it. 
but the english cathedral is set off within its own lawns and trees visible from all angles and this fact makes the emphasis on the central tower seem logical early english churches also established other stylistic features that were not distinguish all the english gothic great length and little attention to height a nearly equal emphasis on the horizontal and vertical lines in the string courses and elevations of the interior a square termination of the buildings eastern and rather than the semicircular eastern projection scant use of flying buttresses and a piecemeal asymmetrical conception of the ground plan of the church other outstanding examples of the early english styles are the nave and the west front of wells cathedral circa 1180 to circa 1245 and the choir and transept of Rochester Cathedral. Many of the largest and the finest works of English architecture, notably the medieval cathedrals of England, are largely built in the Gothic style. So also are castles, palaces, great houses, universities, and many smaller unpretentious secular buildings including elm houses and trade halls another important group of gothic buildings in england are the parish churches and like the medieval cathedrals are often of earlier norman foundation gothic architecture in britain has has been neatly divided into three periods or styles Early English Gothic 1200 to 1275, Decorated Gothic 1275 to 1375, Perpendicular Gothic 1375 to 1520. Let us look into the major characteristics of the English Gothic. The pointed arch. was the most important and characteristic development of early english gothic period this pointed arch was also known as the lancet and was used not only for the nave but also for doorways and lancet windows this arch gave a very refined look to the entire building at the same time it was more efficient at distributing the weight of the stone work above it making it possible to span higher and wider gaps using narrower columns it also allows for much greater variation in proportions whereas the strength of round arches depends on semi circular form because of the pointed arch there was no need for massive walls and windows would be much wider now making the english structures achieve a more open airy and graceful buildings the buttresses supported the high walls and vaulted stone roofs half arches transmitted the outward thrust of the superstructure to supports and buttresses often visible on the exterior of the building the rib vaults replaced groin and barrel vaults making possible a wider range of proportions between height width and length since the arched windows are usually narrow by comparison to their height and are without tracery the early english gothic is sometimes known as the lancet style the lancet openings of windows and decorative arcading are often grouped 
in twos or threes. This characteristic is seen throughout Salisbury Cathedral, where groups of two lancet windows line the nave and groups of three line and clerestory. Instead of being massive, solid pillars, the columns were often composed of cluster of slender. Detached shafts, often made of dark, polished perbeck marble, surrounding a central pillar or pyre to which they are attached by circular molded shaft rings. Characteristic of early Gothic in England is the great depth given to the hollows of the mouldings with alternating fillets and rolls by the decoration of the hollows with the dog tooth ornament and by the circular apse of capitals. In the decorated Gothic period, architecture is characterized by its window tracery, elaborate patterns that fill the top portions of windows. The tracery style was geometric at first, but became, but became flowing during the 14th century. Vaulting also became more elaborate through the increased use of drips for both structural and aesthetic purposes gave full scope to decorative details and was the first style to make extensive use of flowing lines in its tracery as well as the graceful fan vaulting which was so favored by the English. Principal examples of the decorated style are those of the east ends of Lincoln Cathedral and Charlissel Cathedral and west front of the York Minster and Lichfield Cathedral. The perpendicular Gothic period, roughly parallel in time to the French flamboyant style, is so named because of being characterized by an emphasis on vertical lines. The particular, the perpendicular style and its linearity is seen the most in the design of its windows and also allowed for stained glass art. Some of the finest features of this period are the magnificent timber roofs, hammer beam roofs such as those of Westminster Hall. 1395, Christ Church Hall, Oxford, and Crossby Hall appeared for the first time. Let us dwell upon the technical aspects of the English Gothic plans. These varied but little from the Norman. The vaulting as it advanced modified the planning as when pointed arches were finally adopted, nave compartments were made oblong in place of former square divisions. Flying buttresses were introduced. The broch spire is the chief characteristic here as the upper portion rises from the square tower without a parapet. Buttresses are more pronounced than in the Norman period, being generally equal in projection to their width. In order to resist the lateral outward pressure of the pointed walls and were formed into stages by withered set-offs, their arises were often chamfered and different stages were frequently gabled. Flying or arched buttresses were first utilized in this period but were not of common occurrence till a late period. In the interiors, the nave arcade usually occupies the lower half of the height the upper half 
being divided equally between triforium and clear story. Ace at the choir of Ali and naves of Litchfield and Lincoln. But sometimes the triforium was diminished in order to provide a larger display of glass at the Westminster and Salisbury. Let us talk about the walls. These retain the massiveness characteristic of Norman work, but more cut stone work was employed and less ruble filling. The concentration of the weight of the roof and vaulting on the buttresses leading to the gradual treatment of the walling between as a mere screen. The proportion of opening of the pyres adjoining is often excellent as in the transept of Salisbury Cathedral. Now we talk about the roofs. These are steeper than in the last period approaching the shape of a equilateral triangle that is 60 degrees. The framing was exposed where there was no vaults. The framing was exposed where there was no vaulted ceiling. The brasses were used to form a wagon shape or a semicircular reefs were employed. When the close setting of the flat rafters produces the effect of barrel vaulting. Now we talk about ornament. The most characteristic ornament is the dog tooth, generally placed in hollow mouldings and was used frequently. The chisel replaced the X so that carved is treated conventionally and is crisp and fine in treatment. Sculptured figures of large size were used and placed in dishes with canopies over them. The west front of wells 1206 to 1242 has 300 statues being a grand composition where sculpture is fully combined with architecture. In regard to color work, it has been suggested that the carved diapers of this end, the next period are copies in stone of the hangings or painted decorations of the previous period. This is ground for believing that such carved diapers were colored, as was the case with Greek and Roman ornament. Stained glass rapidly increased in importance. The pieces being the pieces being small and leaded up in the patterns as almost to suggest the cubic formation of mosaic. A general tone of color pervades the windows and an unrivaled deep and violet-like blue was a favorite tint. As in the fine 13th century glass at the Canterbury Cathedral. In the early English and following periods, exquisite decorative art was produced. In such work as psalters, missals, books of hours and chronicles, in which the huntsman, fisher, man, shepherd, laborer, scribe, saint, king, knight, and monk were represented, forming a valuable record of contemporary life. The medieval room at the British Museum contains 
examples of armor metal work ivory and wood carving caskets rings and utensils illustrative of the ornamental art of the periods let us look at the salisbury cathedral it belongs to the early english gothic period built between 1220 and 1258 with perbeck marble emphasizes height and light like never before and boasts of the tallest spire in britain at 404 feet with wide projecting double transepts a square east end with a single chapel and a spacious sanctuary the cathedral's nave interior reflects the norman building tradition of heavy walls and a tall nave arcade surmounted by a gallery and clear story with simple lancet windows according to s marlin and c michael the the emphasis on the horizontal movement of the arcades unbroken by continuous vertical colonnades extending from the compound piers directs worshippers attention forward toward the altar behind the choir screen rather than upward into the walls let us look at more images Westminster Hall The early English Gothic design of Henry III's time predominates at Westminster giving the whole church the appearance of having been built at one time The chapel of Henry VII began circa 1503 in perpendicular Gothic style replaced an earlier chapel and is famed for its exquisite fan vaulting above the original carved stalls hang the banners of the medieval order of the beth york minster at york minster the stone pendants suspended from the canopies above the seats in the walls of the chapter house are carved with botanically accurate leaves that seem to burst into life the west front of the york minster is a fine example of decorated architecture in particular the elaborate tracery on the main window this period saw detailed carving reach its peak with elaborately carved windows and capitals open with floral patterns gloucester cathedral not the interior of gloucester cathedral conveys an impression of a cage of stone and glass typical of perpendicular architecture elaborate decorated style tracery is no longer in evidence and the lines on both walls and windows have become sharper and less flamboyant 